I am Eija Niskanen from Helsinki Sine Asia. And this year, one of the movies we are screening is Malu. And I'm here talking with director Edmund Yeo. So hello, Edmund, to Kuala Lumpur, is it? Yes. Hi, Eija. Hi, everyone in Finland. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm in Kuala Lumpur right now. It's really hot. But because it's really hot, I had to turn on the, the air conditioner uh, to make it cold. And, and that's the reason why I'm wearing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are having a little bit colder here in Helsinki. So, oh. um, uh, Malu, um, uh, we would like to know a little bit about how you ended up being a filmmaker and what is your background? Okay, um, so I, I wanted to be a filmmaker since I was a kid uh, I, because my parents, you know, they, they love cinema, they love films. Um, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm from a family of um, artists, actually. Um, my mother was a, a singer, uh, my father was a music producer. And, but aside from being, being a music producer, he, he also writes about films. Uh, he's a film critic, film columnist. Uh, so he used to write for uh, newspaper, magazines, everything. So growing up, you know, with parents like that, uh, I grew up uh, uh, being very in love uh, with films. Uh, so that became my obsession. Uh, I, I didn't want to do music because they were both doing music. So I, I decided to go more into a uh, film. <laughs> yeah. So uh, gradually, uh, there were a lot of ups and downs. Uh, it was really difficult to become a filmmaker in Malaysia. Uh, but yeah, somehow, you know, I, I, uh, I ended up becoming a filmmaker in the end. <laughs> yep. And um, uh, you made some short films, and is Malu your first feature film, or you, did you did you make one before? I don't know. Uh, Malu is my third. Uh, so my first film was a uh, River of Exploding Durians in twenty fourteen. Then my second film was Akerat Vida Day uh, in twenty seventeen. Right. So Malu was my my is my uh, third film. Yeah. So uh, it's been fun <laughs> making feature films. So before I, I did uh, feature films, I started with uh, short films. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I made around like 10 short films in Malaysia and, and Japan uh, um, for a couple of years before I, I felt that I was ready to make feature films. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I spent uh, a couple of years in, in Tokyo uh, for my studies, like back in 2008 to 2013. So during that time, I was doing my master's, I was doing my, my PhD. So that was also the same time I was making a lot of short films. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it seems like like in Malu, um, uh, a lot of the scenes happen in Japan and yeah. uh, filmed in Japan. And it seems that you are working a lot with kind of like half Malaysia, half uh, Japan. <laughs> And um, uh, can you tell about like like uh, your co-production or shooting in Japan for Malu? Okay, uh, so like in in the last uh, ten years um, since I started making films, like okay, twelve years ago, um, most of my my films had been divided to like films shot in Malaysia and films shot in Japan. Uh, you know. There were only a few, like one or two short films that I did in the past where I managed to connect both. Um, so I, I have a lot of love for, for Japan. To me, I felt like it's like my second home. Uh, so when I did my feature films, I always wanted to, do, to find a way to connect uh, to Japan again. Um, so my first two films were shot in Malaysia. They were about the social political like history of Malaysia. But once I, I did Malu, already immediately I knew that it had to be a film done in Malaysia and Japan. Uh, so we, it, it was a really long process. Uh, like we spent like more than a, a year and a half like shooting the entire film um, because like we had to shoot the Malaysian part first before we, we had enough like uh, uh, finances, before we could find like, um, um, uh, um, like co-producers on board 
to help us with the Japanese uh, section, you know. So uh, it took us some time and uh, yeah. So uh, uh, it was a long process. As you can see from the film, like you see winter, you can see like uh, autumn, you know, that's like, <laughs> it, it's real, it's not CG. <laughs> it took a really long time, <laughs> yeah. And this film, um, kind of like it's about a split family, like it's a family story, but they are split across different mm. countries. And is this kind of like um, like a, a splitting of families and maybe splitting of uh, the uh, mm. feature uh, failure, like like a, what happens to people yeah. between even mm. different countries, like a theme that you are very attached to. Hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the whole splitting of of a family. Um, I mean it's something that happened a lot. Uh, um, uh, it's soft from my own family history. Um, like I had uncles uh, who was actually adopted. You know, um, um, because they were separated from their biological um parents. You know, so back in the day, like in in uh, very long ago, decades ago, like um. You know, some families like they 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 couldn't afford to to um, uh, sustain like you, they could not afford to have uh, you know like grow, have more than uh, that many kids at home. So they they were forced to 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 give out like one or two two of their children to to uh, maybe close friends. Uh, you know, so so it's something that that happened to my relatives. Uh, it, I, I knew people. Uh, who who were who had this experience, and I, I thought maybe you know it's sort of like a reflection of uh, myself too, because as a, a Malaysian Chinese, you know, um, we we I always feel like an outsider uh, um, due to uh, some political issues in uh, my country. Uh, so where do I belong? Like, am I from Malaysia or, or, or should I go to Japan? Am I Chinese? You know, so it's. Uh, so I, I wanted to use this uh, uh, film, you know, to explore this uh, broken family, but also in a way I was, was trying to explore like uh, identity, especially like um, a Malaysian Chinese identity like right now, you know, like, like, so it's very common for Malaysian Chinese to, to leave the country um, um, for political reasons. Uh, like Tsai Ming Liang, the, 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 the great director, actually is Malaysian, but he's in Taiwan. You know, like Michelle Yeoh, uh, you know, she's, she's Hollywood, but may, not, not that many people remember that she's from Malaysia. <laughs> you know? so, so there are a lot of uh, examples of uh, um, um, Chinese people in Malaysia who had to leave Malaysia for a better life. Uh, so I think in a way, Malu is an exploration of, of this uh, phenomena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and didn't you you yourself uh, you were born in Singapore? I read somewhere. Uh, yeah, but but it's my parents are both uh, Malaysians. Um, it's just that they were working in Singapore okay. when I was born, you know. But <laughs> of course, I, I I grew up like I spent like a, a lot of my childhood. Half of my childhood was in Singapore, you know. So so it's one of those things where, uh, I think they could call me like a third culture kid because like you know. I'm Malaysian, but half of my time I was in Singapore, you know, and then once I became became an adult, you know, I, I was seldom in Malaysia. I was in, in Australia and then I was in, in Japan, you know, so so it's sort of like a nomadic lifestyle, you know, which I like, uh, but it also made me feel like an outsider wherever I was, you know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, and um, for um, Malu, um, uh, Besides the great Malaysian action actors, you have also like the uh, Kiko Mizuhara, uh, a Japanese actress who also appears in another film that we are screening, The Aristocrats. So yeah. we are lucky to have her in two films at our <laughs> festival. And when you have a famous Masatoshi Nagase, like how did you find, for example, Nagase to, to uh, act uh, in the film? So uh, Nagase-san, I've been a really, uh, I'm a long time fan of his uh, works. Um, uh, Nagase-san has worked on many international productions. Uh, as we know, like she was in Jim Jarmusch, Jim Jarmusch's uh, Mystery Train like long ago. Uh, he did a lot of uh, Taiwanese and Hong Kong films, you know. So 
even for me, like, like my memory of him, you know, it was, it's a mixture, like, like he's, he, be, he belongs to international cinema, you know, right? <laughs> so uh, actually I, I, I met him um, uh, because he was shooting a, a short film in Malaysia a few years ago. Uh, 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 with uh, uh, Yuki Sada Isao, director Yuki Sada Isao. So that was how we first met. And a couple of years later, uh, he was also the jury member of the Tokyo Film Festival when my film Akerat was in competition. Uh, you know, uh, that's the year when, when I won the, the award. Uh, so it was one of those things where, where Nagase-san asked like, hey Edmund, you know, let's work together. Like, like uh, if you have any Thing, you know, it'd be cool to do something together. And I'm like, oh my God, of course, you know, like I said, how can I not do something? So definitely like when, when I, I developed the, the story for Malu, he was the first person I, I had in mind. It had to be him. He's an icon, you know. <laughs> as, for, <laughs> as for Kiko, uh, Kiko, I've also been a long time uh, admirer of her works. Like, uh, um, in fact, when she shot her debut film, uh, Norwegian Woods in 2009. Mm. Uh, she shot it in my university. Um, mm. So the, the film department of my university were involved in that film. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I, I never got to meet her at that time, you know, but um, obviously I, 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 I've seen the film. I knew who she was. She played I Midori in that film, you know. So I've been following her career and, and I've seen like how she was also in a film that was shot in Malaysia a few years ago uh, called Trick. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that's this Malaysian co connection. <laughs> like, uh, so when when I would, uh, when my, my producer uh, Handa San you know, uh, suggested uh, um, Kiko for the role, I immediately I said yes. You know, only Kiko is suitable for for this role. Like like, like um, and then you know it's amazing uh, working with Kiko too. You know, like like. Um, uh, to see how she brings this warmth and, and humanity to, to her character, you know, uh, uh, and she's a really cool and, and really nice person, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it was really amazing to see, to work with each of them, like, like especially like Nagase-san, you know, he, he, he thinks like a filmmaker, you know. So when, when I, I he, he would remember like scenes that happened before. He's like, Edmund, like, how are you editing the film? You know, like, uh, I think story-wise, you know, so he made a lot of really cool suggestions, you know, that, that, that uh, so I felt I learned a lot like working with Nagase and, and Kiko. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are also like, like some of the places stay in mind, for example, a cafeteria in Nagase. Mm. Is or oh. or uh, up uh, when they go up to the mountains, mountains, uh, maybe it's Takao Sun, yes, yeah. And uh, um, yes. how did you decide those locations? Uh, I mean, mo most of the, the these places were, I mean, we did a, a really long location scouting like around, uh, but for the, the jazz cafe, it's called uh, the Chigusa Jazz Cafe at Yokohama, uh, it. It's been around for nearly a hundred years. Um, um, so, you know, I so basically we were going around looking for a location and then I walked in and it was such an amazing uh, 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 experience because like I saw, it's just like a group of uh, elderly customers. So what you saw in the film was pretty much what I saw like when I first stepped into the cafe. It's like, you know, all, all these elderly gentlemen just sitting there drinking coffee and listening to jazz music, you know, like, like they were just sitting there you know, enjoying it. So, and I, I felt that in a way, it, it felt like a, um, a, 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 a fading tradition because like you don't really see young people in these jazz cafes, you know, but you see like this elderly gentleman and, and I thought it would be so cool if, if uh, we could uh, capture this part of uh, uh, Japan, you know, this part of Yokohama, you know, in, in, in our film, you know, uh, I think in a way, like our film tend to deal a lot with uh, missing uh, tradition, you know, like disappearing uh, culture. Like, like it's like that island where the Malaysian island where I shot the first half of the film. Like, like uh, you know, so uh, yeah, so that's how we ended up shooting in, in that cafe. <laughs> uh, the mountain, uh, yeah, what's the name of that mountain? I, I don't think it's Takao-san. But it's like one hour away from Tokyo. 
Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really lovely because I was trying to find a, a we were trying to find a place with a lot of uh, it was autumn, you know, so we want to find a place with like autumn leaves where everything goes like red and gold, you know. So we end up in the mountains like uh, 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 to shoot that those scenes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's one scene in the cafeteria where you kind of get a little bit like Wong Kar Wai wipes, like uh, who are the uh, film directors that have influenced you in your filmmaking? Uh, oh, that, that's quite a lot. Um, I mean, definitely Wong Kar Wai is, is a big influence uh, for me. Um, Shunji Yuai, uh, I think his film Love Letter was what got me interested in um, Japanese cinema, uh, like <laughs> back in when I was in junior high, you know, um, Edward Yang, Ho Sao Sien. But when I was preparing for Manu, actually the director that I was uh, uh, referencing a lot was uh, Imar Bergman. Um, you know, so I think Imar Bergman and Tarkovsky, they are like, especially Tarkovsky, he, he had always been a big influencer like in all my, my works. But Ingmar Bergman, I think there, he was quite a, a, a main like visual reference, you know, for Malu. Um, I, I, I think because my cinematographer, Kong Pahura from Thailand, uh, we worked a lot together. Kong's like an expert in uh, Ingmar Bergman films. You've seen all the Ingmar Bergman films, you know, he had written like, like dissertations and all this stuff about Bergman. So I felt that, you know, to, to work together with him, uh, uh, I wanted to learn more about Imam Bergman films too, like to prepare for Malu. Uh, so that's why I did. And, and uh, so for this film, definitely, I, I think Imam Bergman was a, a massive influence. Uh -huh. And which film is specially by him? <laughs> is your favorite? Uh, I think Cries and Whispers. Uh, and uh, Fanny and Alexander, there's a yeah. bit of persona, definitely, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting so, because I mean, it, it comes quite close to us, our neighbor country, <laughs> so <laughs> it does, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I uh, remember, so definitely, I, I think, uh, quite a few. I mean, it was very interesting because I, I didn't watch that many Ingmar Bergman films, uh, until like before Malu, you know, so for me it was, I think that's a fun part. Like I, I always like to do like homework, you know, this sort of a special assignment or, or homework, like just before a film, you know, so for Malu, it was like Imar Bergman. <laughs> I'm gonna start watching Imar Bergman films and get into the mood, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I, and I also think that like Kilowski's uh, uh, films were an inspiration too, like, like for, uh, yeah, for Malu. Kislovsky yeah. from Poland. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so you're also attached to European art cinema besides Asian art cinema. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, mean, I always love you know, like, uh, the European art cinema. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah, I mean we, we have a French editor, uh, Tina Bas, like she's French, you know. And so I think she she brought a, a, a very special touch. To, to the film. <laughs> so, so it's actually yeah. like a very multinational project in the, in the, how Malu ended up being, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. So. And um, you also um, uh, recently shot a new film on location in Japan, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, last December, uh, we, I, I shot a new film uh, in Japan. Uh, I mean, we still don't really have a title yet. Uh, I mean, we do, but unfortunately, I, I, I don't think we can reveal the title. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was, uh, we, we shot it in um, Tokyo, uh, yeah, like last December during the pandemic. Uh, it was pretty tough. Uh, um, I mean, we, we all had to do like, for me, when I flew in, into Japan, I had to do like a, a, a quarantine, you know, uh, a 14 day quarantine and then like do a, like a couple of swap tests, you know, uh, uh, and then every day like we had to do like um, like a temperature test, like I think three, three times a day. So everyone had to wear like a mask uh, 24 seven, 
to shoot the film. So it's almost the same uh, team that we had from Alu, like uh, um, you know, a couple of the same producers that I had, uh, um, um, you know, Oyama-san, Ogi-san, you know, uh, uh, my, the same cinematographer, Kong, uh, you know, so, and yeah, yeah, it, I, I think, I mean, this time the entire film is Japanese, uh, uh, except for me and, and <laughs> my cinematographer. Uh, I was just uh, doing some uh, post, like voice recording work this morning. Uh, uh, like they were doing it in Japan and we were doing the entire session remotely. Like I, I was, we were on Zoom, you know, so I could watch the recording. <laughs> so we, have, we had to work remotely, like everything like that. It's not like Malu when it, it happened before the pandemic. So I could fly to like Paris for the editing, fly to Bangkok for the, 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 the sound mixing and, and the color grading. I think for this new film, Sadly, for the time being, we might have to do everything remotely <laughs> because we can't fly yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how filmmaking is during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> and and Malu premiered at the Tokyo International Film Festival, and and you kind of connected the shooting and going to the festival for a premiere with a you know same trip to mm. you know just do one quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how was the reception? It was a very convenient. How was the reception at the Tokyo Film Festival? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a uh, we got a really warm reception. Like uh, both uh, screenings were sold out. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of uh, very nice write up and, and feedback. Uh, I mean, like most films, of course, there are a lot of positive and negative <laughs> reviews. You know, like, like those who loved it, they really loved it. Those who didn't like it, of course they didn't like it, you know, like, uh, but, but I mean, uh, it was a very, uh, it was great, you know, to, the fact that during the pandemic, we were able to show our film on the big screen uh, for audiences, you know, I, I, and so it was, uh, I mean, for me, it was mind-blowing, like, like, uh, as, like last year, I never really had the chance to go to the cinema, you know, so to, to see my own film on, on in the cinema, like on a big screen, it, it was a very, uh, a moving uh, experience <laughs> yeah yes and, and but how, how are things in uh, Finland like uh, are, the, are the cinemas open now like in Helsinki they are not open now um, which oh. is why we are having uh, for the first time we are having our festival online but uh, we really hope that once this is over like like uh, we can we can enjoy your maybe your next film on a big screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, at the time, you know, I think it's it's great that film festivals are still happening. You know, whether it's physical or online, you know, I, I think um, despite the pandemic, I think it's great that we can still watch films. You know, <laughs> yeah. And and it's great that that uh, people like you continue making films despite all the, you know new arrangements you have to make. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can you give your last uh, greeting to us here in Finland? <laughs> okay, so, uh, hi everyone, <laughs> I really hope that um, you will enjoy uh, Malu. Um, it's a film that's set like half a world away, um, you know, but I, I think we it's a universal story about family and it's about love and it's about identity, you know. Uh, I have a lot of love for Finland. Sadly, I've never been to Finland before. I hope uh, but I have uh, some great friends from Finland, like you, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have some filmmaker friends from Finland. So I always wanted to come to Finland. Maybe, you know, someday, like when all this is over, when the pandemic is, you know, when we, can, we are allowed to fly again, you know, definitely I'll, I'll be here, you know, then we can meet up face to face, have some beer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and have fun. <laughs> yes, we, we hope that that is possible in the future. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, let's everybody, everyone here enjoy um, seeing your film and hearing your, at least seeing you here on video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, and good luck to your future uh, finishing your next film. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, bye-bye to Edmund. Uh, uh. <laughs>
<laughs> See ya.